Hey YouTube, Jack Lear here again, uh, working on another one of my weird projects. This is actually the inside of a Genesis controller, and all these wires that are soldered up are soldered to these little guys, which are switches. Now these switches will be placed inside of these so that when you move the joystick it clicks the buttons and goes in the right direction. Now I've got two of those and I've also got these little guys which if you these go together they go in there like that and then when you push on the button it pushes on the button right there. Now, the whole thing is going to be encased in here, uh, which is actually an old silverware box that I'm going to cut the top of, mount the joystick here, mount the buttons over here, the start button in the middle, because it's a start button, and then hopefully have everything sitting in the middle, have the cord coming out right here, and plug into the Genesis, that way I'll have almost a lap controller, something I've kind of wanted for a while. Um, I don't know, I think I may build a stand for it eventually. Just have one of those really weird, I don't know. But uh, that's where it stands right now. I'm about to go, I just soldered everything on the board so that everything's making connection. I'm about to go hook it all up and test it, and we'll see how things go from there. Alright gang, I've got my go-to game for testing controllers, Streets of Rage. The reason I use it is because it's got three separate buttons that I know do three different things. So now let's see. And I've coded the, the wires, I don't know if you can see that. But the green ones are the controls, up, down, left, and right. This one's the start button, which is green and black. And then the rest of the buttons are black. Okay, start button works. Z, focus. I'm not as concerned about that. So far, one not working, I'll take that. Alright, gang found out that uh, my soldering job was actually good. It's this switch that seems to be bad. Because when I take and go ahead and just push it... Oh, well. Yeah. So that's the forward button. Or right, I guess. But when I touch just the metal together, she goes. If I have it hooked up... A quick thing to remember is that the opposite of whatever you do is going to happen. So for instance, this is up. So up is actually going to push this one. So you got to remember that when you're looking at the joystick, you have to wire it up backwards. Uh, now time to wire it up and uh, see if I can actually move around. Alright, I managed to actually break off one of the solder points right there. So currently my left is not working. So now to put it all together. Alright, before we start cutting on the wood, which is harder to replace, what we're going to do is we're going to make an outline of what we're going to cut. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and countersink this that amount, which is barely a quarter of an inch. All right, I took those parts off. Now we're going to take these screws out, and we're going to take this part off because in case you can't see, there's a little bit of an overhang right there, and I want to get this set down as easy as possible and leave as much wood so that it'll be as sturdy as possible. All right, another uh, kind of side note. 
is that this is all spring loaded. This little thing had to come off. And then there are two washers and a bunch of other components and a spring. Just make sure you know how to put it back together. Okay, I've laid them out in order. There's the joystick. Little circle part. Tiny little plastic piece. The mounting bracket. The spring. Another tiny little plastic piece. Plastic piece that goes in the bottom. Square piece that actually pushes the buttons. Two washers and the clip. So you need to remember that they all need to go back in order the same way. Now in order to do this, I'm just going to take a piece of cardboard. I used a Pop-Tart box. Brown sugar and cinnamon. My favorite. We're just going to overlay it here. We're going to cut out the middle until it sits there. And then that section will be done. Alright, so here I've got my little template. This is what we're going to use. Now the good thing is, is that I don't need to have it perfect you notice all those jagged edges? The way a router works is that it can't make those goofy little jagged edges unless you really, really try hard. Now if you'll notice, I kind of went a little too far over here. No problem. We just put that there, get a little piece of tape, and voila. And there we are. So that's going to be my pattern to go all the way through the top of the box so that I can mount it just like that. Now let's make the other side, which will be this side, so I know to countersink it. This one's going to be a little easier because I can kind of cheat. Well, not cheat, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other part of the box. Now one of the ideas I'm toying with is eventually see this, it's got this little lip right here and there's no way you can see that oh 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 there's a reflection right there see that little lip I think what I might do is put a piece of brass down in there just to make it look a little I don't know and here is template number two see that fits right in there and then this one fits right over there now I've got both templates ready to go. Unfortunately, I don't feel like drilling tonight, so I'll be finishing this video in the morning or possibly the next day. Depends on how tired I am and when I can get time to work the drill.